Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze a fixed beam. When it carries a point load in the center, the span of the beam is given as L. In this analysis, we are going to find the fixed end moments, the reactions. Also, we are going to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. And also, we are going to find the deflection in the center. To find out the fixed end moments, we have to draw two diagrams. One is free movement diagram or mu diagram. Another is fixed movement diagram or mu dash diagram. First, let us see how to draw the free movement diagram. To draw the free movement diagram, we have to consider the fixed beam as a simply supported beam. If in the simply supported beam, a point load is acting in the center, the formula for the maximum bending moment is WL upon 4. We have to make the free movement diagram. In the same way, we draw the bending moment diagram in the simply supported beams. Now, let us see how to draw the fixed movement diagram. In the fixed supports, there will be movement. In the fixed support A, the movement is MA. In the fixed support B, the movement is MB. Using these two movements, we have to draw the fixed movement diagram. In this beam, the point load is acting in the center. So, it is symmetrical loading. In the case of symmetrical loading, MA and MB will be having the same value. We know that the values of MA and MB will be same, but they will be acting in the opposite directions. MA will be acting in the anticlockwise direction and MB will be acting in the clockwise direction. Then we have to see the direction of the arrows. This arrow indicates upwards. Also this arrow indicates upwards. So the fixed movement diagram comes above the span. Since MA and MB will be having the same values, this diagram will be in the shape of rectangle. These two movements will be hogging. So the movement diagram will be negative. Now let us find the area of mu diagram. This is a triangle. We know the formula for the area of a triangle. Half into breadth into height. Here the breadth is L. The height is WL upon 4. Finally, we are getting WL square upon 8. Now, let us find the area of mu dash diagram. This is a rectangle. We know the formula for the area of a rectangle. Length into width. Here, length is L. The width is MA. The area of mu dash diagram and the area of mu diagram will be equal. Let us equate both of them. Then we can cut this L and square. Finally, we are getting MA is equal to WL upon 8. We know that MA and MB will be having the same value. But MA will be acting in the anticlockwise direction. MB will be acting in the clockwise direction. Now let us calculate the vertical reactions. Here we are having the symmetrical loading. In the beam, there is a point load acting in the center. Since it is acting in the center, we can easily find the vertical reactions. RA and RB will be equal to W upon 2. Now let us calculate the shear force values. I am going to calculate from the point A 
and move towards the point B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. You can see the calculations here. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. For that we have to combine the free moment diagram and fixed moment diagram. You can see that I have combined both of them. Wherever they are acting alone without mingling with each other, we have to mark the signs. Wherever they are acting together, we are not marking anything. We just keep the space empty. Now we are going to find the point of contraflexure. Point of contraflexure is a point where the bending moment changes its sign. It may change from negative to positive or positive to negative. Here there are two contraflexures in AC and in CB. Let us make a section in the point of contraflexure from the point A at a distance of X. We have to find out this distance. We know that at the distance of X the moment will be zero. Let us find the moment at this distance so that we can find the distance. I am going to calculate the moment from the point A. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The moment in the point A is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. The reaction in the point A is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is x. Let us take this on the right side so it will become positive. Then let us take this on the right side, it will become inversely. Then we can eliminate this w and this w. 2 upon 8 is 4. Finally, we are getting the value of x which is equal to L upon 4. No need to find out the distance of point of contraflexure on the right side because it is a symmetrical drawing. The point of contraflexure will occur on the right side from the point B at the same distance L upon 4. Now let us calculate the moment in the point C that is in the center. We are going to calculate the moment in the point C from the point A. In this case also we are moving in the right hand side. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so it will be negative. The reaction is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is L upon 2. Finally for MC we are getting WL upon 8. Alternatively we can calculate MC by subtracting WL upon 8 from WL upon 4. In this way also we will get WL upon 8. Finally let's make the bending moment diagram more clearly. In the fixed beam, in the fixed supports, there will be no slope. So theta A and theta B will be zero. Also in the fixed supports, there will be no deflection. So the deflection YA and YB will be zero. Now we are going to find out the deflection in the center. Let us make a section XX at a distance of x from the point A. In this section, we have to find the moment. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. The reaction is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is x. Now let us equate mxx with the ei d square y upon dx square. 
then let us integrate on both of the sides when we integrate this we will get ei dy upon dx for this we can use the formula and make the integration c1 is the constant 2 into 2 we will get 4 then let us integrate this equation on both of the sides when we integrate ei dy upon dx we will get ei y then using the formula we can integrate these values c2 is the new constant 8 into 2 we will get 16 4 into 3 we will get 12 in the point a there is a fixed support in the fixed support there will be no slope we know that dy upon dx is the slope so when x is 0 dy upon dx is also 0 in this equation let us apply x is 0 and dy upon dx is 0 when we do that we are getting c1 which is equal to 0 also in the fixed support there will be no deflection so when x is 0 o is 0 in this equation let us apply c1 is 0 x is 0 and o is 0 when we do that we are getting c2 which is equal to 0 in the eiy equation let us apply the values of c1 and c2 when we do that we will get this now let us take ei on the right side so it will come in the denominator now we have to find the deflection in the point c in the point c the value of x is l by 2 so in this equation instead of x we have to apply l by 2 after the simplifications we are getting the deflection in the center yc which is equal to minus wl cube upon 192 ei we got a negative value that means it is the downward deflection let us consider a simply supported beam in which a point load is acting in the center in this case the deflection in the center yc is equal to wl cube upon 48 ei now let us consider the fixed beam with the point load in the center in the center we know the deflection wl cube upon 192 ei we can rewrite 192 by 4 into 48 we know that 4 into 48 is 192 so yc of fixed beam will be equal to 1 upon 4 of yc of a simply supported beam now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video